Hey everybody, Retro Pie Guy here. Today I'm gonna show you guys how you can get your arcade button and joystick encoders up and running without crashing emulation stations. So this has been a massive issue for people over the last few weeks. I've been getting tons and tons of emails every single day asking me what needs to be done in order to get past this issue where emulation station crashes as soon as you try to utilize your new joystick and arcade button encoders. So this has been super frustrating for a lot of people uh, including myself because I've gotten so many emails from people talking about this and you know I've gone as far as to say let's let's um, you know evaluate what you've purchased and almost everybody has purchased the exact same arcade button kits that I have and they work beautifully so the issue is due to COVID and all these shortages with various uh, components to electronics the manufacturers have actually swapped out certain components within these that um, is creating this issue. So I'm not even sure what the components are to be perfectly honest, but it's enough of a difference where it's causing this issue because previously, like I have on my arcade cabinet, um, I'm not experiencing these issues whatsoever. I've never had an emulation station crash ever in my life. So um, not from this anyways. I did have a crash a couple times when adjusting um, some settings that I didn't really know what I was doing with. But um, in terms of encoders, I never had any issues. So it all stems from these changes that they've made in order to continue producing these. So luckily I have the fix. A couple things we're going to need um, in order to make the changes to fix this problem. We're going to need an additional computer because we actually need to go in and remotely access our Raspberry Pi and RetroPi card. We're also going to need a keyboard which we're going to connect to our Raspberry Pi in order to make these changes. So we're gonna dive into it now. Um, buckle your seatbelts though because this is not a quick fix. This is gonna take a little bit of time and uh, I'll try to make it as painless and as easy for you guys as, as possible. I'm going to also provide you guys with a couple different codes in the description of this video so you can copy and paste those in um, or also just take a little bit longer to reference them for the points in here where you're gonna have to manually type them into your command lines in RetroPie. So let's jump into it. All right, so assuming that you've been dealing with this issue where emulation station crashes when trying to use your arcade joysticks and arcade buttons, then what you wanna do is you want to try to boot up RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi without anything plugged into the USB ports on the Pi. So this is going to enable you to actually get into RetroPie. It's not going to crash or send you into the terminal. You're going to actually be able to boot right into RetroPie because the issue is stemming from these controls. So once you're able to do that, and you're into RetroPie, then you can go ahead and plug in your USB encoder connection to your Raspberry Pi's USB port. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate into our configuration or options page. So you can see I have that right here on the screen. It's usually going to be the collection that has either the Raspberry Pi or RetroPie logo on it. In this case, I have both. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this option and I'm gonna go down to Raspberry Pi config which is right here. So I'm going to select that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my keyboard. So if you have a wireless keyboard, you can go ahead and plug in your USB receiver into your USB port on your Raspberry Pi. If you have a USB wired connection, go ahead and plug that into your USB port on your Raspberry Pi. And now you're going to be able to navigate through these different options with the arrow keys on your keyboard. And where we're going to go is the third option down where it says interface options. And we're going to hit enter. Now we're going to go down to SSH, which is the second option. We're going to hit enter there. And it's going to ask us, would you like the SSH server to be enabled? Caution, default, and weak passwords are security risk when SSH is enabled. We're going to go ahead and select yes here. And it's going to give us the confirmation that the SSH server is now enabled. So we'll go ahead and select OK. So now we can go down to finish. If you just go to your right arrow key and you hit that twice, you'll automatically jump down to finish. And we'll just hit enter here. This is going to bring us back out to our options or configuration menu. And from here, we're just going to back out all the way. So you're all the way back to where you started here. Next thing we're going to do is on our keyboard, we are going to hit F4. So just keep in mind if you have one of those keyboards that kind of gives dual functions to your function keys, sometimes you'll see that they have um, been assigned to like your numbers buttons. 
If that's the case, you have to hit the function button, usually down by your space bar, usually to the left of your space bar. So I always just mention that because some people get confused. So go ahead and hit F4 on your keyboard. And that's gonna open up your command line. Now your command line may look different than this. Mine here says Playbox, yours might say Raspberry Pi, RetroPi, uh, something to that effect. It's going to do the exact same thing. It just looks a little bit different. Same functions, same features in here. So what we're gonna do in here is we're actually going to allow root access. So we need to type in a command. So we're gonna type in sudo, S-U-D-O, space, nano, N-A-N-O, space, slash, E-T-C, slash, S-S-H, slash, S-S-H-D, underscore, config, C-O-N-F-I-G. And we're gonna hit enter on our keyboard. And now you're gonna be able to see all these different lines of code. So what we need to look for now is we need to look for a line that says hashtag permit root login. So let's try to find that on here. And I've got it right here. I'm gonna to try to highlight this for you guys here in the video. It's about halfway down and it says hashtag permit root login and then it says prohibited dash password. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually backspace out this hashtag. So if we go over and we highlight, so the little underscore that's flashing is underneath the P, we can go to that and now hit backspace. And you notice now that it changes color and we no longer have the hashtag in there. Now we're gonna go over here where it says prohibit password um, and we're going to go right in front of that D there, so you can see my underscore is flashing in front of the D. And we're gonna backspace that all out. And now we're gonna type in yes, Y-E-S. So now you can see that the whole line reads permit root login space yes. Now we're gonna hit control on our keyboard and Y. So now we're going to hit control and X on our keyboard, so control X, and you see down at the bottom it says, save modified buffer. We're going to go ahead and hit Y on our keyboard and then enter. And now we get rerouted back to our initial command line here. So now on that command line, we're gonna type in sudo sudo space passwd space root, R-O-O-T. So you're gonna notice that password is abbreviated. You don't have an O or an R in there. And again, I'm going to highlight all this stuff on the screen for you guys. And I'll also list all of these commands in the description of the video here, just to make this a little bit easier because I know it gets super confusing like this. And you can see um, in here, I actually typed it in wrong before uh, going through this with you guys here. So um, it's super easy to make mistakes. So what this is going to do for us though, once we hit enter, is it's going to set a new password so we can access the root files. So we're gonna hit enter and it's going to give us a line that says new password. So we can enter in a password here. Um, I'm going to put in root R-O-O-T, just so I don't forget this because that's exactly what the function of this password is gonna be in order to access those root files. So I'm gonna type in root and now you're not going to see this actually populate in. So you're gonna think it's not working, I promise you it is. Just be super careful to make sure that you spell your password correctly because you're not going to be able to see the confirmation of what you're typing on here. So I'm gonna type in R-O-O-T and again, you can see that nothing populated in here and I'm just gonna hit enter now. Now it's gonna tell you to retype it once again. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, R-O-O-T, enter. And it says right there, password updated successfully. And it kicks us back out to another command line here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in sudo sudo space reboot r-e-b-o-o-t and we're gonna hit enter here. This is going to reboot our entire system. All right, so once we reboot, what we're going to do now is we're gonna go back into our configuration or options and we're going to go down to network tools. And we're gonna go down to where it says, what is my IP? We're gonna select this. And I've blocked this out, but you need to write down your IP address. So it's gonna say your IP is, and you're gonna write down this number. Now we're gonna go ahead and select okay. 
and we can back out to our main page and we're just gonna leave this here. All right, so once we're on a regular computer, we're gonna open up our web browser and we're gonna type in the following web address to download WinSCP. So this is the address right here. I'm gonna highlight it on the screen, but I'll also include it in the description of this video so you can easily access it. So we're going to type it in, hit enter, and we're going to download this to our regular computer. This is going to be the Windows version. So I'm just gonna go down here, download WinSCP. It's 11.3 megabytes, I believe. And once that downloads, we're gonna go up here and open the file. We'll hit install for all users, we'll hit yes. We'll accept the license agreement. Typical installation is fine, which is what's recommended. Hit next, commander's fine, install. And this should install in just a matter of seconds here. So we can just hit finish. All right, so we come to this page once it's downloaded, but we'll go down here and open up WinSCP. So you're gonna see here, you automatically come to this host line. So this is where we're gonna actually type in our IP address. So you're just gonna type in your IP address and you're gonna hit login. So you're gonna get this warning right here. We're just gonna go ahead and select yes. So now for username, we're gonna type in root, R-O-O-T. We're gonna hit okay. And for password, you're gonna type in whatever you chose as your password. I kept it root, same as the username, R-O-O-T, and I'm going to hit okay. It's gonna authenticate and connect. So once I do all of that, I'm gonna go over here to where it says root over here on the right hand side, and I'm going to double click on this folder. And now I'm gonna go down to the boot folder, double click on that, and I'm going to look for the line that says cmdline.txt, T-X-T. So let's scroll down here, see if we can find that, cmdline.txt. So here it is right here, I'm gonna highlight it for you guys. And we're gonna just double click to open this. All right, and once we open up our cmdline.txt, we're going to go to the end of the line, so it should end in this zero right here, and we're gonna hit space, and we're going to paste in this additional line. So I'm going to provide this additional line for you guys, both on the screen here, but also in the description of this video, so you can copy and paste it right over without having to duplicate it, because it is pretty long. And once we have that entered in, we're gonna to go to the top left corner, where we have the little floppy disk icon, and we're gonna just click that, that's going to save everything. So once it's saved, we can exit out, we can leave it up here, whatever we wanna do, but we're gonna jump over to our Raspberry Pi running RetroPi now. All right, so now that we're back over on our Raspberry Pi running RetroPi, we're gonna make sure that our USB encoders are all plugged into the USB ports, whether you have one player or up to four, make sure everything's connected in here, make sure that you had originally mapped everything the same exact way though, and all your connections were exactly the same. But as long as all that is good, we're gonna go in and we're gonna open up our main menu now. And we're gonna navigate down to quit. And we're gonna select that option. And we're gonna drop down to restart system. And we are going to restart everything. We're gonna get this confirmation. We're just gonna go ahead and hit yes. All right, so we fully rebooted our Raspberry Pi running RetroPi. So we're back in, all of our USB encoders are plugged into the USB ports on our Raspberry Pi. And so far, so good. We've actually booted up into everything. We're not being kicked back out to our terminal. We're not running into the warning that emulation station has crashed. So I'm gonna test this out. I'm gonna jump into a game real quick. So let me go over here. I was actually trying to play uh, Donkey Kong Country when I started experiencing this issue. So I'm gonna jump back into that title and I actually didn't experience the issue in the game. I actually didn't even jump into the game. I just loaded it up and hit my hotkey and, so, and uh, start button. And that's where I ran into that issue. So I'm gonna do the same thing right now, hotkey and my start button to exit this game. And we're going to see if we run into the issue where emulation station crashes, or are we back out to our menu? And we're back out to our menu, so we have completely fixed this frustrating issue.
All right, guys, hopefully that solved your problems. Uh, if it didn't, or you have any questions, you need any sort of help with this, hit me up in the comments section below or reach out to me directly. Always happy to help out any way I possibly can. I know this was not a fun process, but in the end, we are able to get everything up and running by following these um, not short steps, but extensive steps, I will say. So that's going to do it for this video. You know the deal. If you found this video helpful, enjoyed it, smash the like button for me. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. Also subscribe to the Retro Pie Guy YouTube channel because I do a ton of videos here based on retro gaming, tutorials, gameplay demos, forgotten favorites, YouTube series, and a ton of really cool and new stuff coming very soon here to the Retro Pie Guy YouTube channel. So best way to stay in the loop for all future videos is to subscribe. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thanks for watching.